A very warm welcome back to Globetrotting. The A350 now acts as the flagship aircraft for European manufacturer Airbus. While the aircraft family has been adopted right around the world, its run hasn't always been seamless. And now in 2025, the type has actually emerged in the headlines for more so its struggles. So what is the status of the A350 moving into the mid 2020s? One of the industry's most significant battles is supply chains from airlines to aircraft manufacturers. These supply chains have been shattered, and keeping up with demand has become problematic. Airbus had planned to continue increasing output rates to meet demand for the aircraft series. The increase in production would also improve finances and overall performance. However, this will not be possible due to the complexities of supply chains. Airbus has stated that its production rates will likely remain around 6 per month throughout 2025. Despite these supply chain complications, the plane maker believes it still should be able to work through its backlog, and it has long-term goals of achieving 12 units per month by 2028. Supply chains encompass many elements that are crucial to the production and delivery of aircraft. Therefore, the widebody remains one of the many planes in the commercial airplanes division of the business that is being impacted. Basic requirements, such as delayed delivery of seats, impact the the ability to produce planes on time and then ship that final product off to airlines and obviously your aircraft manufacturer only has so much available space. You may have seen during the pandemic and other times in recent history where manufacturers were maybe struggling with things, especially on the side of Boeing, that outside of their factories it looked like a parking lot of half complete planes that were waiting to enter back into production but it simply wasn't possible, whether due to engines, certification woes, ground Soundings, problems, or more. On a more severe scale, Airbus has noted, for example, that there are several times that fuselage parts have been delivered very late from Spirit Aerosystems. While this affects the aircraft in production, one thing it does also do is have a knock-on effect on other upcoming units that need to enter production halls. In the last couple of months, Airbus also confirmed that its upcoming A350 freighter will be delayed another year, with an expected launch now in 2020. Airbus previously outlined 2026 as when they expected to deliver the first A350 freighter and even targeted a flight sometimes towards the back end of this year, 2025. However, this was then deemed impossible as Airbus faces a plethora of supply chain constraints and other challenges in moving ahead with the production and certification of what is still meant to be a very much game-changing freighter. It's just getting these new aircraft to market has been a challenge. The A350F has already amassed over 50 orders, the plane maker confirming this figure is now at 63, and many more customers are currently weighing up their options on whether the A350-1000, as it has been designated, will be their desired choice. Popular companies like Emirates are debating whether this or the upcoming competitor aircraft in the 7778F from American plane maker Boeing will be the better option, and they wouldn't be the only ones like I touched on. All of these are going to be important contracts for Airbus to win over if they want to solidify their position as a true competitor that is going to shake up the next generation of our freight scene. If Airbus could win over Emirates and its Sky Cargo division, it would be really significant and allow it to pursue valuable market share that Boeing had previously really reigned supreme in, remembering that Emirates Sky Cargo relies heavily on your Boeing freighters, especially that 777F. However, fresh delays to the A350F, which is the focus for this segment of the video isn't a shock. Unfortunately, the certification and production of aircraft are not really at the rates that they once were. While it's always been common for delays to arrive for new endeavors, those delays have increased tenfold and supply chains with their continued problems don't make things any easier. That certification process has really been tightened down, certainly driven by Boeing's struggles in the latter stages of the 2010s, with incidents involving major crashes leading to a shakeup in just how planes were approved, and also the economic conditions. 
which have meant that launching new planes have probably never been as hard. It's not all doom and gloom for Airbus and the wide body program. I know I'm taking a look at maybe some of the more negative stories that have surrounded the program, but there are still very much exciting projects to come, and the problems would not be seen as long term ones, more short to medium term that need to be navigated through, and that's why they're being mentioned by the executives at the plane maker, as they feel if they can navigate these challenges, they can move ahead in a much more positive manner. Take the A350. 1000 ULR, for example. As the name suggests, this is a high-capacity jet that's going to build on what many airlines know about the Dash 1000 and add one crucial element, range. That range will make flying between specific city pairings possible, which was not deemed feasible in the past with an efficient aircraft. And I'll be honest, the A350 1000 ULR really does catch my attention even more so on a personal level, because it's destined for Australian flag carrier Qantas. And if you don't know, I'm based in Australia. It's been my home since birth. And Qantas's project Sunrise Initiatives aims to connect Australia to the world on a single flight without a stopover. This means connections like Melbourne to London and Sydney to New York will all be possible. I've had the pleasure and the great privilege of flying long haul many different times. And I love to chase the cheapest ticket. Will I necessarily be looking to fly business class on a 20 plus hour project Sunrise flight? No. And do I really want to fly 20 two hours without a single stopover in economy, even if there is an exercise area, maybe for the novelty of it, but I would still prefer a stopover and go the cheapest way possible, whether that, say, is a stopover in Fiji or Hawaii to onwards than if you're heading to New York. Apologies for going on a bit of a tangent there, but it is an interesting question I'd love to put to you just about this aircraft. So the A350-1000 ULR is basically Airbus's answer to Qantas's needs and will launch soon. There will be more opportunities in the future for further adoption for these airlines seeking ultra long haul travel and it's exciting. While the plane maker has delayed the A350F and yes supply chains continue to hurt it's an endeavour that is exciting and one I wanted to mention. The A350F is also considered to be the plane maker's first attempts to enter the freighter market with an actual next generation aircraft and basing it off a highly successful passenger model. If all goes according to plan the freighter will pose a real challenge to Boeing's upcoming 7778F, and it's already technically doing that. Companies are having to weigh up whether the 350F or the 7778F is the best choice, and in the past, they may have maybe just gone straight away for Boeing's alternative, but now they really have some food for thought, which is exactly what Airbus is wanting to do with this product. And again, I thought I'd conclude. Yes, there have been some negatives around the A350 program, but it is mostly exciting. These niggles with the A350F are hopefully not going to be forever, just in the same way that the 777X has its woes. Is it not? Is it incredibly frustrating? Oh, for sure. I think all of us just want this plane in the skies and flying and really see what it's capable of doing. Because based on specifications and everything we know about the plane, it's going to be a fantastic aircraft for customers that purchase it. But actually getting the aircraft in airlines' hands has really been the complicated thing. One day, the 777X will be flying. Same with the A350F. All will be well in the world. And all these discussions we're having now will seem like forever ago, with these planes truly thriving. But until then, there are always going to be complications in the launch process, and for the A350 program, Airbus knows it's just been a bit of a turbulent last half decade, and they're still feeling the effects, maybe not as bad as a couple of years ago, but it is certainly present. Thanks for watching, take care, be safe, really appreciate the support here on Globetrotting, and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis. And we'll fly.